My name is Coven Bear. I've been in the business now for 24 years. The internet's changed the game, and I've had a lot of time to think about, you know, I guess the goods and the bads of the internet, but I guess one of the things I can say from for me and for a lot of other salesmen is sometimes, you know, when the internet was first arriving, we were fearful of it because we really didn't understand where it was gonna evolve to or what, what shape it was gonna take. And one of the things that I like about the internet is because back in the day, when customers, you know, you had a lot more floor traffic and um, our ups. And what you would have to do is you would have to work through them ups. You know, an average salesman would have to work through five to six ups to get to one car sale. A great salesman would have to work through three or four ups to get a car sale. Now the consumer comes in, they know what they're looking for, they know what vehicle they're looking for, and that just kills a lot of the, I guess, um, unnecessary time. And also, it kills through a lot of your weight. And I don't want to say it's wasted time because it's not, but it makes your job more effective because you can help them because they know what vehicle they're looking for. And that's a big plus. One of the things I've always learned is everything's a trade-off, you know. And I guess when I was younger, I would look at it as a trade-off as a bad thing. But when you say, you know, everything in life is a trade-off, that's not always a bad thing, you know, and that's one of the things that the internet, you know, gets rid of is, you know, how many people you have to work through to get that one sale. When Walker, of course, bought out All-Star and they started really, you know, acclimating the internet real hard, um, you know, I, I mostly, you know, as far as my career, I was taught by old school and I was taught to live off, you know, off of ups and repeat and referrals, but my repeat and referral business wasn't that strong because I didn't know how to cultivate it. And I was kind of sitting in the middle of the lot and John Heaton walked up to me and he said, Cove, I need to talk to you. And I was kind of like, what well, we need to talk about? And he talked to me about a couple things that I needed to change as far as in my career and um, what I could do to better myself. And of course, you know, when somebody, I guess, tries to talk to you about, you know, how to do better, especially if you're doing it as long as I have. I guess I took offense, well, I don't guess I did, I took, I took offense to it when all he was really trying to do is help me because he was somebody from the outside looking in. And uh, I got a little wound up on him. And um, But you know, one of the things I've always noticed is God's always put men in my life to help me. And I didn't see it at the time, but John was there to help me. And he, of course, he had to I don't want to use the word strong arm, but he had to convince me in a couple, you know, forceful ways, but, you know, it's really been a blessing to me and my family. And what I learned to do is, of course, you know, work through Facebook and social media and Instagram and all these other things. And, you know, one of the things that he used to always tell me and tell all of us in a sales meeting is we need to make ourselves relevant. And when he first started saying that, I mean, I, I, I I didn't really like that. I didn't like, what do you mean by making myself relevant? I've been making myself relevant for the last 17, 18 years. But what he meant by that is we have to make ourselves relevant to other people and to you know our customers, our friends, and our family. And one of the big things that Facebook does is it always keeps your face in front of them. That way when they think about a car, they think about you and they give you an opportunity. And that's what he was talking about, by making yourself relevant. I had to become relevant to them. That way, when they thought about their automobile needs, I was there to help them. So, I love you, John. Thank you. You know, I don't have a college degree. And I was um, just a kid. And a lot of people don't realize, um, that because I've been in the car business, that I'm really not that old. I'm only 45, and to some of y'all, I'm aging. But to the people around me that's watched me grow up in this building, they, sometimes they forget that I started in the car business when I was 20 years old or just turned 20. And a lot of the reason, you know, when I first got in, it was a way of means for me and my family. You know, I figured out quick that you could make good money in this. I wasn't the best. I just had a baby on the way and I was put in a situation where I had to provide and I was always taught to provide. And at first, my why, why do you do what you do, was because they told me I couldn't. I had one in particular salesman told me that I would never make it. And I guess as a young man, I was so rebellious on so many things that that put fuel in my tank. And 
I tell my kids, my, my, my sons and my daughters, I said, I always try to tell them, I said, don't let anger propel you because it'll make you old quick. I said, be driven by love, um, passion, and them things. I said, in my younger life, I was driven by anger because they told me I couldn't. Now, did it help me? Yes. Have I been successful to a degree? Yes. But as I'm getting older in the car business, my why is no longer because they told me I could. Now, and to really be honest with you, I feel myself changing because I love to see these younger guys do better. And I love to help them because I can see them going through some of the same frustrations that I went through and that I didn't have help with. And I try to be there for them to help them, you know, whether it's, you know, closing a deal or whether Coben, how long did it take for you to be in the business until you had this kind of repeat and referral business or, you know, just there's so many questions asked me, what is a walk around? You know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I try to help them. And that's my, I really I sincerely mean that it's not about the money no more. Although the money is a, is a, um, is, is a, a way to make means, but it's to help them. I mean, I, I really enjoy helping these young guys and, trying to put some of this knowledge into them because if I could plug myself into them and, and, and they plug into me, I would love to be a computer and just download everything because it would make their life so, so easier. But some ways I realize that it won't because sometimes you don't grow unless you're going through the struggle and that's what they're going through. When I was younger, I went through a lot of struggle and I had a lot of great car men put things into me that I didn't understand why. Let me give you for an instance. And I wanted to save this for a later time, but I'll give it to you now. I'm going to give you a couple of names. Larry Mangel, some deals you don't always want. Dennis Brown, thick in your skin. Um, I can think of others. Don Alayo, I could use the words he used, but I'll use nice words. What are you doing? Where are you at? What's going on with you? Why did you do that? That was making me accountable. Um... Another salesman, I'm trying to think of his name, he would say, the only time that I'm scared is when somebody's not in front of me. Um, let me think, what else? I know another salesman, we'll just call him Greg. The car business is this easy. We get the money, they get the machine. All of them sayings, all of them things that them men have put or have taught me. John Heaton, make yourself relevant. When times get hard, I look back on them things and that's what I hold on to. I'll revert back to the basics. I'll revert back to what these guys have put into me. Although, thought, although they thought, I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was like a wild ass on the back end of the woods. But you know what? God has a way. And that's what he's done for me. He's made a way. Well, the first thing you do to do to be successful is you have to come to work to work. You know, you're gonna have up days and you're gonna have down days, but you can't let that get in the way of your work ethic and what your daily plans are. You know, one of the things that I do every day, you know, um, when I get up and my feet hit the ground, before I get in the shower, or I mean, and like I said, my feet just hitting the ground from the, from the bed, is I always give thanks to God. And I thank Him for another day that I have strength in my legs. And I thank Him that what He's going to do for me. And I ask Him to prepare me for the people that He's fixing to send me. And, you know, some people, you know, would say, well, that, that's just a little, no, little far-fetched, but you know what? That's things that I do to prepare to be successful. When I hit these doors, no matter if I'm up or I'm down, I know that one thing, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and I, I've realized this the older I get, that I'm here and I am um, representing Mr. Walker in everything that I do, and I'm not saying that for lip service. Every deal that I lay down, every, every dollar of gross that I make, I know that that helps keep the bigger picture going. And I always think about that on every deal and what I'm doing. Now, do I think about it every time? No, but when things get hard, I remember that. I'm here representing another man's name and I wanna make these people proud and I wanna do a good job because I want this place to keep rolling, not only for me, but the younger guys because there were people before me that did it. Another thing I prepare on is I always try to keep up, you know, with my task in the computer, I always try to send my uh, quick pages because I'm gonna tell you something, a lot of people say quick page doesn't work and uh, I hear a lot of griping about it, but you know what, I get three to four to five car deals a month by just telling people happy birthday, 
hey, it's been three years since you, you know, bought a car, you know. That's deals that I harvest just by sending a simple 15 to 20 second quick page and it puts money in me and my family's pocket. So that's just a couple of the things that I do to be successful, you know, and I always try to be thankful. I don't want to get lifted up, you know. Um, I don't ever want to take what I have for granted because like I said earlier, I'm nobody special. I'm just somebody that God shined his light on and God gave grace to. When I started in this business, I was just a poor kid, an uneducated poor kid. And um, I think somebody said this, I think in one of Sissy's videos, um, it said, and it kind of kind of made me smile, that a good attitude and a good dispensation will bring you further than any education ever will. And I can say that's been that in my life. And success, the picture of success used to be for me. Now, when I say that I was just a poor kid and uneducated, doesn't mean I was stupid by far. I just didn't have a degree to go with it, but I had a want to and I had a drive. And like I said, and it's something that I wanted to prove people that I could do. When I was a young man, the picture of success was a nice home, big cars, money in my checking account, I guess material things. I mean, I. I'm not going to lie to you, when I was young, I was driven by material. Um, but you get a little older, you get a little wiser. That's not the picture of success for me anymore. The picture of success for me now is seeing my children do good, seeing them safe, um, going home to a safe home, you know, a home that where um, the basic things are taken care of. And, um, and my picture of success is for somehow some way to put like I said earlier all of this knowledge into somebody that will take it you know like one of the guys that I try to help here his name is Hunter he's a super good young man and he listens and and one of the things that I've always noticed when I'm trying to teach somebody and probably once upon a time people noticed this about me as they were trying to teach me is when you're trying to teach somebody and they say I know I know I know they're not being teachable because they're too busy trying to outthink you. But I love it when you can see a young man or a young lady and when you're trying to put into them, they just get quiet and they think and, they, and they're taking it in. And that's one of the things that I can say that we're bl very blessed with here is that a lot of our young salespeople, they do that. When I'm talking to them, they get quiet and some of them are write notes and some of them just take it in. So my picture of success now is to give back um, to them what took me years to, to, to our, I've got a man, God, God brought a man in my life about 20 years ago, oh, it's been 17 years ago, and he's my pastor, and um, he's really taken a lot of time with me, and he's put a lot of things into me, and one of the things that he always says to me that I say to myself every day is this, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying, it affected me, and maybe to help somebody out there, real men will while weak men wish. I say that to myself every day, and it goes a part of every day of my life, in my business, in my family, with customers, every facet of my life, living for God. You know, that <laughs> I don't want to get preachy on this, and I'm not, but um, hell is full of good intentions. It really is. And failure is too. So that's why I always say, real men will, or ladies will, while weak men will. Thank you.